Hello fellow elementalists. So, I don't remember where I originally saw this deck, which is very, very unfortunate. It is not my deck. I did not come up with this idea. I just remember seeing the deck link, taking a look at it, and it looked really simple, really straightforward. So I figured, oh, okay, this would be a great beginner's deck. Saved the link, kind of just worked on getting the cards for it and going from there. But this deck, as it turns out, is very, very good. This is it, this is a straightforward deck. It's simple in nature. The game plan is straightforward. That part's all true. But this is very perfectly capable of farming demigods. We're not playing with the mages anymore. We can even skip the champions. You can consistently farm demigods with this type of deck. So to actually go over the deck, which, you know, I didn't come up with it. I really shouldn't be naming it but I'm calling it the Dream Phase deck for two very specific reasons, which we'll talk about as we take a look at it. So it's a mono aether mill deck, and the two key components of the deck are going to be Dreamcatcher, which is gonna be your win condition, and Phase Shield, which actually lets you get to your win condition. The big way that this combo works is so you're going to have, you know, your a mark is Aether because it's a mono Aether deck. You're going to have the Aether Towers for the quick Quana. That part's great. Ideally, to win the game, you're going to play Dream Catchers, which has a lot of text to it, each of which is, you know, fairly nice. Like during your opponent's turn, your hand and Quana pool are protected, so you're you don't have to worry too much about like quanta control or hand disruption or you know anything like that as long as you have a dream catcher out but the real you know kind of meat and potatoes of this card is the very last part that says spend three aether quanta destroy the top card of target player's deck that doesn't sound like too much especially when you get into the demigod decks that have like 70 80 cards in them spending three quanta per turn per you know dream catcher which if you have three dream catchers to destroy three cards you know you're getting upwards of uh, you know nine quanta per turn that's a lot uh you do have the sustain between the towers and the mark that's all there uh but while, while this is you know kind of the key win condition that's not the most important part of the deck the most important part of the deck in my eyes is the phase shield Completely block enemy attacks, last for three more turns. There is a very specific interaction w between this card and other cards like this. Basically any types of permanents. Weapons, shields, other permanents. Uh, there's a interaction between those and a card called Regrade. Regrade says if target card is upgraded, it becomes unupgraded. If it's unupgraded, it becomes upgraded. So kind of switching grade value, we'll call it. Gain one quanta, the target amount, I cannot target stacks. Um, th those last two aren't important. Basically, th the reason this card's in there is because it allows you to switch the grade of the phase shield. To be a little bit more specific, if, actually, what do I have? I don't have any other face shields. Um, let me look at. Yeah, I could downgrade this real quick. So, going from an upgraded face shield to an unupgraded face shield. The different, the two primary differences are, you know, it costs less quanta and it only blocks for two turns as opposed to the original three. Otherwise, they are the exact same card. Whenever, well, let me re-upgrade this so I don't lose it. Um, whenever you use regrade on any type of card and it switches the grade value, it treats it as a brand new card. 
So if you have a face shield that is upgraded here and you use regrade on it, it becomes an unupgraded face shield. So it'll last for two more turns, but it's treated as if it was a brand new permanent. It doesn't matter how long the original face shield lasted before the new one essentially comes in. So you have a face shield here. Let's say you play the upgraded one. It lasts for three turns. You're on your final turn. You're going to be playing regrade on that shield before it expires. It becomes unupgraded, so it does the same thing, but it's actually going to last for another two turns. You wait for that one to go down to its last lifeline. You use another regrade on that. All of a sudden, that unupgraded face shield re-becomes an upgraded face shield, and it's going to last for three turns right off the bat. Because you are pretty much indefinitely blocking all enemy attacks, you have more than enough time, and you're going to be generating more than enough Quana, because, you know, the initial six for the original face shield is a hefty investment, but obviously there's a lot of Quana sustained between this, and an upgraded regrade does not cost anything. So you can essentially do this for free, and while you're building up all of your quanta over time, that investment is going to go into the green dream catchers. So, over time, while you're completely, you know, playing with your face shields and keeping yourself indefinitely alive, your dream catchers are going to be doing the milling. And that's essentially how this deck works. I absolutely love it. Uh, I went over a hefty explanation as to how all the nitty gritty works out but realistically this is a very consistent very straightforward deck uh the, the only card i didn't talk about is lobotomizer don't know exactly why it's in here um doesn't seem that great against other shields and i mean i guess it's a nice pay one aether to remove target creatures abilities that can be relevant and it might be worth it as a one-off um I don't think you need another Fade Shield. Obviously, you can't have any more Dream Catchers. I don't think you need another Aether Tower. I can't have any more regrades. So filling that final slot, I think this is okay. Um, but it's it really just feels like a filler card. Other than the occasional creature ability removal, I don't see a purpose for Lobotomizer. It's really not that great as a weapon. Uh, but to give you, just to kind of show you how the deck works, Let's fight a demigod with it. And right off the bat, we're off to an okay hand. Um, ideally, this would be better if one of these towers was a dream catcher. So that way, you know, you play a tower, turn one dream catcher because, you know, you generate a, a quana when it's played and then it just costs one quana. But going from there, we know that, you know, we're getting four right off the bat and another five between the four towers and our mark that we'll be able to play a shield turn two and we'll see how that goes from there and turn so we'll play our shield probably didn't need to because you know they're just playing a shield they're not directly attacking us although they do have poison if we're not fast enough with getting the dream catchers we will die to poison but We're probably going to die to poison. Yeah, we're not getting lucky with the dream catchers. Uh, but to show you kind of how the interaction works, you know, we're on our last turn for the Aether Shield. We'll just use a regrade on it. Now it's unupgraded, but it lasts for two more turns. Yeah, too, too little too late for the Dreamcatcher. It is what it is. Uh, let's try a rematch. Okay, now we have three Dreamcatchers and no shields. But we do have three towers, so we might be able to make this work. I'll play dream, two Dreamcatchers, keep the last one in hand just in case we need it. But otherwise... Okay, there we go. We got a face shield. So... Don't know exactly what the opponent's deck is, so I'm not going to worry about that. Right now, um, the goals of this deck, 
get the uh, dream catchers out as quickly as you can get the face shields out as quickly as you can so we'll play our face shield mill an opponent's card and they have theft all right fantastic at least we have another face shield That's a mill. Alright, this is not good. We didn't draw either another face shield or a regrade. But Yeah, now we get the regrade. Alright, we're just gonna lose this one. Yeah, this deck is really weak if they can interact with the face shields, so destroying or theft or anything like that. Also very weak to psionic, which is spell damage completely ignores shields, or momentum, which I guess just gets past shields, but... Okay, I would say that this is an ideal hand, as long as there's no, you know, interruption. So, we'll accept this. Play Dreamcatcher, pass turn. Face shield, go. Play on another dream catcher. All right, they destroyed it, fantastic. Yeah, it, they could just destroy shields anytime they want to. And they destroyed our win conditions, all right. I'm telling you, this deck is actually really good. It just needs, you know, it just has rough matchups occasionally. But this is the only deck I've really gotten to work well with farming demigods. Anything else never really seemed to work. At least not for me. Okay, we're on our last shield. So, grade it. Mill out the opponent. We'll throw out another one. The important thing is, whenever you're going to do a regrade, you always want to keep your eye on the shield. See up at the top corner here how many turns it has left. And whenever that mark hits zero, whether it's upgraded or unupgraded, that's when we're going to regrade it. Okay, we didn't get a shield. Um, that's fine. There we go, cool. Got another shield. And now we're at the point where you know, I don't exactly remember how many cards Nosferatu started out with, but now he's down to five. Just because of how many much milling we've been doing with the dream catchers. So Alright, destroyed, don't care. Last card for Nosferatu. Continue. And that's how you farm a demigod. And even though we lost, I think it was three demigod matches in a row it still only had an entry fee of 25 gold so we lost 75 gold through, or we spent 75 gold through that because no this was the fourth one so we spent 100 but we just gained 323 from facing that so that is still a net gain of 200 just from you know one game trial and error so ultimately not bizarre. Yeah. Ultimately, I like this deck a lot. Um, you can see the game plan is very straightforward. It tends to be very consistent. 
I think I had a little bit of bad luck with, you know, some of the draws there, and we might have been able to squeeze in a victory if we had better draws. But basically, because of how long a phase shield can last, like let's say you only have one phase shield to start and one regrade to start, start. if you use them properly like I was showing you, that's still five turns of not taking any damage. As long as neither of those are interrupted, that's five turns of drawing cards, you're probably going to draw into either another phase shield or another regrade to just keep the process going. And that's really where the deck shines, that's where I really like it a lot. Just the interaction of always having a face shield to stay alive. And then from there, you could say that whichever win condition you want to try and apply to your deck, go for it. But since we're already heavily invested in Aether, I think having a mill deck that can get around other shields uh, doesn't have to worry about creatures and also gives you a little bit of an additional protection just from all of the word letter soup that is on Dreamcatcher. I think that Dreamcatcher is probably going to be your best bet for actually securing that victory. The only thing I do need to say about this deck is there is absolutely no possible way I can think of that this deck would work without fully upgrading it. Uh, that said, Dreamcatcher is a common, so fairly easy to get just through crack and packs. Uh, Face Shield is an uncommon, and I know there is, I think it's just called Immaterial, there's a mage that tends to drop Face Shields if you defeat it. So getting Face Shields, even if you don't get them directly through packs and you can't purchase them through the bazaar, uh, getting a total of 6, 12, 18, 24 face shields for these full upgrades. Really not as hard as it may sound. Obviously, towers are super easy to upgrade, and regrades are also common. So getting the full upgraded playset of those, not the most difficult thing to do in the world. So yeah, this is probably my new favorite deck. This is absolutely what I'm going to be used to try and farm demigods and grind up for more gold. So that way I can use the gold to get more cards and experiment with more decks and just have an overall better time. But if you are also looking to go down that route, this deck, I, I'm still contending, even though I only demonstrated a 25% win rate on that, I still contend this deck is very, very good. For demigod farming because even through a 25% win rate on that we still had a net gain of over 200 gold oh also one thing I'm gonna show you um, you don't have to take my word for it if you don't want to uh, I'm just gonna show you what evidence I have and you can trust me on it my other decks so far are not very good against champions uh, they can really only consistently work against mages. However, if we go to the Colosseum, you know, beating three commoners is easy. You could do that with just about any deck you really want to. But I use this deck to beat three commoners, two champions, and whoever the novice of the day was. I know for a fact that Matrix is not a good matchup against this deck because it's um has scions with psionic which is direct spell damage and then also abusing bites just to make psionics or scions like 20s for uh, it's, it's gonna rip through our own face shields very quickly so not ideal this actually looks kind of like a fun deck i might look into building this one but um <laughs> so not the best opponent we could go up to for our daily, but this deck is very capable of fighting dailies. So once again, here's the deck list. I'll be putting the deck code in the description as always. Uh, huge shout out to whoever you are, the mad lad genius that came up with this deck idea or wherever you saw it from. I'm sorry I can't give you the proper credit like I said, but uh, you've absolutely earned my respect. So until next time, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.